Design and Quilt software gives you all the tools that you need to lay out and visualize your final quilt project before you ever sew a single stitch. Design and Quilt features a library of included quilt blocks, and it also includes the tools that you need to create both easy and advanced quilt block layouts. Also create quilt block layouts that are meant for foundation paper piecing, and applique functions are included as well. Let's take a quick look at how easy it is to begin laying out and playing with your quilt blocks. I love very traditional blocks and quilts, such as the rainbow bow tie quilt that you see here on the screen. This is a very simple quilt block that's been repeated and duplicated and then recolored quickly within the Design and Quilt software. Now this is something that I could certainly do on the design wall in my sewing room, but by laying out and playing with the colors ahead of time, it's gonna speed up my quilt making process for me and I'll know right away whether the effect is what I'm looking for in terms of the color variation that's working its way across my quilt. Let's take a quick look at how easy it is to start laying out a quilt, audition our colors, our fabrics, and our arrangements of our quilt blocks. Using Design and Quilt as our virtual design wall, we can now experiment with a bow tie quilt block and see what types of secondary patterns can be created by simply rotating the block or experimenting with color placement. In our properties window, we can see that we have four blocks across and four blocks down, which is plenty for our experimentation. We can increase the number of blocks, we can adjust the block size, we can add sashing or adjust the borders. But again, for this exercise, we're gonna leave our quilt layout as is. Let's go to our quilt block library, and from the traditional folder, we're going to choose traditional 002, otherwise known as the bow tie block. Now let's just take a look at what happens when we repeat this one simple block over and over again within our quilt layout. Well, it's very graphic and very stunning, and this is something that would make a beautiful two color quilt in a very traditional uh, color way. Let's see what happens when we start to play with the layout of the blocks themselves. So if we were to choose one of the blocks and rotate that block, we can see that it's starting to create a little bit of a zigzag type of a pattern across our quilt. I really like the way that this looks, so let's continue this out by rotating or mirror imaging every other block in the layout. This gives us a completely different look and almost becomes kind of a circular impression across the quilt itself. Let's see what happens now when we start to experiment with the color and maybe add a little more texture and a little more visual interest to the block. Let's select the little triangle units within the quilt. Let's change those to another color just to kind of get a feel for what's gonna happen. Now what we've created is a little more texture, a little more visual interest within the quilt itself. And we almost start to have the look of some stars or maybe a little trellis that's running through the quilt. This is a very interesting look and feel. Um, let's see what happens if we take it just a step further by adding some additional color and variation to the, to the blocks. We can select units within the block individually and start adjusting and arranging their color. Or we can select multiple pieces within the quilt and start playing with those colors as well. And sometimes I like to just sit and audition colors within the blocks just to kind of see what's going to happen and if any sort of secondary patterns tend to pop up. I like working with very scrappy backgrounds. So this orange area, I would almost be inclined to start playing with what happens if I start making changes and adding texture or adding color variations without adding a completely different color. And so as we're experimenting with this and we're working our way through the block, there may be things that you start to see popping up that you particularly like or color variations that you tend to gravitate towards. So let's have a look at a variation of that same layout where the color is what's creating another pattern throughout the quilt. 
So here again, those bow tie blocks are laid out with every other one facing the opposite direction. By using the main bow tie fabric coming down through the quilt, it's creating a nice vertical element. We still have that circular motion that's happening. And then we have that secondary pattern that's running down through the body of the quilt. Using multiple colors of background fabric in the bow tie blocks just adds a little bit of visual interest and texture. Now we can, can continue this same experimentation by leaving the backgrounds intact and changing the color of each of the bow ties so that we have something that's very, very um, scrappy and visually interesting as well. Again, we can take that one step further. Now here, by adding sashing, it breaks up that strong circular element that we had happening. It still is very interesting. It still gives us a lot of texture and appeal. Far cry from where we started way back here with our simple repeat of the bow tie block. While I like this variation, I think that my preference is without the sashing. So I'm certainly glad I have my virtual design wall to be testing this out rather than having to sew all of these units together. Now, as I'm looking at my scrappy layout, these four blocks almost seem to become their own unit. So what would happen if we start to treat the four blocks as a unit and now experiment with rotating the positioning of the bow tie blocks within that four unit area. Now we almost have a traditional X and O style repeat starting to happen. And this is really kind of interesting. I'm liking the way that this looks. And what if we continue that experimentation, rearranging again the positioning of each of these bow tie blocks? Now we almost seem to have a chevron effect running down through the body of the quilt. Now by changing the orientation of our blocks so that we have that circle in the center and working our way out and around the quilt itself, we're creating something that has a completely different look and feel to that very first layout. Here, unifying the colors of the background of our bow tie block even makes this circular ripple effect even more visual. And we can continue experimenting with the layout of each of the blocks within our quilt layout. We have barely scratched the surface of what you're able to create and visualize using the Design and Quilt software. Up to this point, we've worked simply with solids in creating our quilt layouts. You can scan your favorite fabrics. You can import your fabrics from your favorite manufacturer's websites. You can even design your own fabric using the tools found in the Design and Quilt software. I hope that this has inspired you to take a deeper look at the Design and Quilt software.